How do you recycle skincare bottles? You know that my face is picky. Your face is probably picky, but did you know that your recycling is picky? For example, I didn't know that if certain products had stickers on them, they couldn't be recycled. Certain food containers, like a glass spaghetti bottle, if it's still got spaghetti sauce inside of it, they can't recycle that. I didn't understand a lot of these things and living in the San Francisco Bay Area, I take a lot of pride on the fact that we are a greener city. I try to do what I can where I can when it comes to the environment. That means I eat vegan, I have a low flow shower head, I've tried to do the electric vehicle thing, and there is no such thing as being perfect. But how do we do better? And specifically when it comes to skincare and personal care products, they are my arch nemesis. They are the one guilty pleasure that I have in my life that's actually a part of my hygiene routine. Simultaneously, there is no denying that any personal care product comes in a wrapper. We're talking toothpaste, we're talking skincare, we're talking all of the things that we use. And the best ways to do better for the environment are to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Reduce, meaning actually reducing the number of products that we're using if we can. Reusing, meaning if there is some sort of container, we are repurposing it, maybe as a flower vase or something that we can give second life. And recycling, making sure that we understand what the numbers on the the bottom of our packages actually mean. Making sure we know how to separate out different components or where to take off stickers. And growing up, nobody taught me this. I don't know all the answers and I might be wrong, but my goal in learning this is to push myself to do better and to share a little bit of that journey here with you. We are partnering with Yours, who creates both sustainable and customized skincare that's made in Switzerland on this video. You'll also notice that this video is a fundraiser, and if you have the means and ability to donate, I would encourage you to do so. If not, sharing is still a way to support. Let's first talk about packaging. There is so much plastic in our oceans right now that scientists estimate there will be more plastic pieces than fish in our oceans by 2050. There is a gigantic pile of it that just circulates throughout the Pacific Ocean. As someone who loves to swim in the ocean and visit it, that is terrifying. There are many different tips on how to be more eco-friendly online, from thrifting, buying at thrift stores, or using eco-friendly clothing, uh, from reusing things like candles or spaghetti jars. But what about when it comes to skincare? This actually started off for me by finding this brand. This is called Love From Yours, and they do customized skincare, but they do it different. Their whole thing is that they're not only vegan and cruelty-free, but they ensure that all of their products are made with sustainability in mind first. I actually Instagrammed it when I first found out about them and the whole thing is customized skincare. So there's like two pieces of revolution here because number one, it's customized to each person's face and number two, it's made to be sustainable. So if we can use skincare that's actually tailored to us, we're using less products overall. We're reducing. If we can make sure that we're using products that are built sustainably, we can actually recycle the packaging. And you know that I have multiple cats, so it is very easy to reuse a box. Customized skincare is nothing new. I'm actually doing quite a few different videos on customized skincare, whether it's some of the prescription ones like Curology, Dermatica, Rory, all those things, or the non-prescription ones like Function of Beauty, like Uology or whatever that thing is or over-the-counter ones that claim that they give you a quiz and analyze your face. Customized beauty is becoming more of a thing, but the question is, is it a trend or is it something that's actually going to stick with us? My diet is different than yours. My skin is different than yours. Should your skincare be tailored to what your face needs? A lot of these companies online have these quizzes, but then they sell you these gigantic sets and they kind of make you pick from curated ones or they add one or two active ingredients. What was interesting is that when I took this quiz online, Love From Yours actually asked asks you really detailed questions so that even if you don't know your skin type, you can answer with how dry or oily it's feeling, or the sort of desired outcome that you're looking for that your current routine isn't already serving. The really cool thing for me is that they also asked me to type in my zip code. And what's fascinating is that based on where you live, there will be different humidity levels. There will be different levels of pollution if you live in the city versus in the country. And the fact that that quiz took my personal lifestyle to heart was extraordinarily interesting, especially because I haven't had brands do this for me in the past. If it's where I'm living, it's a really viable factor. I used to go to New York every now and again, which, oh my God, plane emissions, when I found that out, my heart was crushed, but all of those mistakes aside, um, I used to go to New York quite often and I would have to change my skincare routine when I was in California versus in New York because in California, the summer with the fires, the weather was very different than the hot, humid, sticky streets of New York City. And that's when I started to realize 
okay. I could have oily skin, but it's going to act very differently in these two locations. And when I'm on a plane, the humidity levels actually bottom out. Fun fact, I brought a barometer onto a plane once to actually track the humidity levels. And let me tell you, when I said it gets dry, oh, I said it gets dry. If you do wanna go rewatch that adventure, uh, it is there for you. <laughs> When I was first filling out my quiz for yours, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to get, but I ended up getting the Drops of Balance Serum, which ended up being excellent for my oily prone skin and blackheads. I got the Matte Moist Moisturizer, which was a really cool gel formula. And for night, I got the Drop of Light Serum, as well as the Milky Way Night Cream, which is vegan and does not contain milk. Both the website and the little pamphlet that my products ended up coming with was really helpful to understand a visual of the ingredients that are included, why they're customized to me and what they do. The matte and moist moisturizer ended up being a gel-based moisturizer that kind of like the serum delivered some good hydration, but with the softness that they claim and a matte finish throughout the day. They said that skin feels moisturized without a greasy residue. And as an oily skin, acne prone person, this was a slam dunk. The Milky Way Night Cream was one of the more different formulas in the set because it actually came out looking more white and creamy like a Milky Way moisturizer. I ended up going back for the Cloud Factory Foaming Cleanser and the Bounce Back Balancing Toner. Dude, this cloud cleanser was absolutely lovely. It was literally a cumulonimbus for my face. It wasn't overly stripping and it didn't leave me feeling imbalanced. It did have a couple of ingredients like orange or fragrance, which I know some people don't like, but overall my skin handled it very well. And I felt like this was a really good balancing everyday cleanser. The bounce back toner was also really refreshing. This toner actually had a lot of bacterial ferments, which my skin ended up soaking up. This was a different toner, but a very refreshing one. And if I didn't want to use like one of the day moisturizers, I could see myself being really happy with just this toner and a moisturizer. Yours not only had the quiz, which asked you about your skin, but it actually showed you what ingredients they were recommending. And what was interesting is at the very bottom of the website, they actually had a recycling guide. And that's when I started to get extraordinarily intrigued. Most brands not only don't do that, but most brands don't build in recycling and sustainability into their packages. And it wasn't until I actually got the bottles and started to play around with them, I realized why. This is completely recyclable from start to finish. And their little page even shows you how to separate the different components and the different materials and actually how to scrape the bottle clean so that you get 100% of the product out and on your face into your pores where they can work. But you're also ensuring that you're not contributing to pollution or that you're able to recycle these responsibly. And when I saw this, it seemed really cool, but then I had to ask myself, well, what makes this different? How do other skincare companies recycle or do they recycle at all? Again, what even is recycling or sustainability? Recycling is defined as converting waste into reusable material and sustainability is defined as the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level. And I've got skin today that I want to take care of. I want to take care of my skin tomorrow, but I don't want that to come at the expense of the animals in our ocean, of our trees, of our air, and of the earth that we live on and share. And again, I can't be perfect. I'm doing what I can. I'm trying my best, but that might not be everything. And as one individual, that's definitely not enough. But hey, your girl's trying. <laughs> Now, when I say recycling, you probably think of these three little arrows. This is actually a Mobius strip and it's indicative of reduce, reuse, and recycle. But do you actually know what those numbers that accompany it mean? There's mainly numbers one through seven and numbers one and two are really easy to recycle. Those are PET and HDPE. And these are often found in things like your salad dressing containers and some plastic bottles that you can recycle. There's number three, which is PVC. You can have different types of it and it's used very much industrially. Number four is the opposite of number two, LDPE, low density polyethylene. And this is normally what people think of when they think of polyethylene in these bags. Now, it's important to note that polyethylene can be combined with different materials. There's some concern about polyethylene in skincare products. Polyethylene glycol is a liquid, a liquid that pours itself. It is very different. And there are actually microorganisms in water systems that can ferment specific types of plastic. Now, should we rely on those microorganisms to do that and not do our our best? Of course not. Um, but I think that is very interesting. And trust me when I say that I have searched far and wide for the doctors, the PhDs, the environmental scientists to give me an answer. And I am still working on a very long laborious video about polyethylene glycol in liquid form and in cosmetics and what you need to know. For what it's worth, nope, not in here. 
Number five is PP, hee hee. Number six is PS, and number seven is actually just that. It's just number seven. And it's kind of a catch-all for the other stuff that really can't be recycled all that well. These numbers are actually resin identification codes, and they tell the recycling plant that receives these things whether or not they can be recycled. That's why it's important to sort your different trash, to make sure that your different plastics are going in different bins, and to make sure that your cardboard is going one place and your glass is going in another. But this is also why it's super important to make sure that you're removing those labels. Again, I didn't even know this until recently, but stickers have to be removed from these containers in order to recycle them. Some of your salad boxes and some of the quick kits that we get at store like Trader Joe's at the supermarket, you can't recycle those after you eat out of them. And did you know that if there is food matter or food waste in them, you can't recycle them? Again, same with skincare. If there is any amount of product on the inside of that bottle, they can't recycle it. It ruins the process. And that's why Love From Yours actually takes you through how to scoop out every last drop. And these actually come in airless pumps. The airless pumps not only ensure that the formula is maintained and that it's kept oxygen free, it's long lasting and ready for your skin to absorb, but it also ensures that the inside of the bottle is completely clean so that it is easier to recycle and you're not wasting a ton of product and therefore money. I did not realize how much product I was wasting until I started cutting open those tubes. Don't get me wrong, I still love a ton of skincare products that come in tubes, but oh my God, there's another three to five uses at the bottom of each of those bottles. Please get a pair of scissors and put them in your bathroom. And when you think that you're done with the product, literally cut it open and scrape out the stuff on the inside. You don't need to purchase a separate skincare spatula to do this the way that TikTok will tell you you need to. But literally get a finger, scrape it out, and you'll realize there is so much more to go. With the airless pumps, that's not a problem. It does it for you, but it's still really important that we kind of bring that to the forefront. And that is something that I need to look into more, that I need to understand better. And full transparency, I'm trying to think of what other brands have airless pumps. There are a few that come to mind, maybe Murad, Paula's Choice, Akaderma, but there are not that many. Um, and it is important. And again, something that Shell Bisley talks about, she has a really great sustainability channel here on YouTube. It's not even about choosing the most sustainable things. Sometimes it's also about reducing. Don't forget the reduce piece of the reduce, reuse, recycle. You could reuse and recycle all you want, but that reduction piece is really important. And unfortunately, in the capitalist society that we live in, that often doesn't get spoken about enough. Yours does put together skincare formulations that are customized to your skin, meaning that you can actually tone down the amount of products that you need. The Cloud Cleanser is amazing and you can actually use it as a double cleanse. If you want, you can use it to remove makeup or you can use it just to gently cleanse the skin. It's extraordinarily fluffy. It literally is like a little cumulonimbus in my hands and it goes onto the skin in such a silky manner. Uh, if you do wear makeup, you can double cleanse. Uh, if you really want to use a balm cleanser, again, go for it. But the fact that you can use this in one and that you can customize this line to what your skin needs means that you're cutting out some unnecessary steps that you might not need or that you might be able to find a solution to. The toner is fairly new. This is the Bounce Back Balancing Toner. I find that this absorbs into my skin so well. It actually leaves my pores feeling rehydrated and kind of soothed as opposed to being a little bit overly stripping. Sometimes toners have a tendency to do that. And again, you can customize yours to make it what you want it to be. But so far my skin has accepted this quite gladly. My personal favorite products from the line are these. These are the serums and the moisturizers, and they're truly customized to what your skin needs. Again, I am acne prone and oily. I live in the Bay Area, and some of my issues are not only acne, but also kind of mitigating fine lines and wrinkles, making sure that my skin stays hydrated and balanced. Again, I want to support my barrier instead of overstripping it. And you know, when I was younger, I didn't use sunscreen the way I should, and so I had to kind of up that game. As I was going through the little quiz, it was telling me exactly what it was putting inside of it. And when I actually got them into my hands and on my pores, they absorbed so well. Now, full stop, they do have an eye cream. And can I say, this eye cream is not my favorite. It is literally a serum in an eye cream tube. I was not impressed, but what I do like is that they specifically say, put this in the fridge. It comes with this little roller ball that actually adds a coolness and a compression to this under eye area. This means that if you are puffy, if you are a side or face sleeper, there's actually science as to how cold therapy or cryotherapy can help stimulate circulation and literally physically 
push fluid from this under eye area back into the lymphatic system to get reabsorbed. The serum is really good. I actually like to use it all over my face. This is probably the product that I would skip out on in the future. It's just not for me. Um, the packaging is very cute. It says, I love you. Um, but you know that I do not love eye creams. So whereas I love this little set, this one was a hard no for me. Now, yours also has a sunscreen. Their sunscreen seems amazing. Everything that they have is created in Switzerland. I wanted to get my hands on it, but unfortunately it hasn't arrived in time and I haven't been able to use it yet. So although the ingredients look great, although the formula seems magnificent and you know that SPF is your BFF, I haven't personally tried this product, but maybe in the future I can give it a chance. And when it comes to understanding why this brand is doing things differently and how they're actually able to afford to do that, again, customized and sustainable at the price that they are, I jumped on a call with the founder and that's how I actually learned a little bit more. Navneet is the founder and she started explaining to me the skincare consumer cycle. It actually reminded me a lot of a video that I watched when I was younger called The Story of Stuff. It reminded me a lot of fashion and not in a good way. You see, in fashion, there is a term called fast fashion, which is basically a wasteful industry that just creates things for the sake of people purchasing them. There's a lot of waste involved and it harms both people and the environment. There are fashion retailers that do it differently, that do it properly and sustainably, but those are the outliers. And unfortunately, it seems like we've been seeing an uptick of this fast skincare in which something similar is happening. Essentially, as consumers, there are things that we need. There are things for our hygiene or our health that are essential, but there are also things that we want. And in a society that is constantly advertising to us, showing us different trends on TV, we constantly feel like we are left outside of the loop if we do not purchase the same item that the Kardashians are wearing this year. If we don't have that latest brand or that latest thing, we don't feel like we're good enough or keeping up with the times. And because trends are often visual, people can see when we are or aren't playing into them. The example that the story of stuff uses is high heels versus low heels. They kind of fluctuate every seven or so years, jeans versus leggings. This is a way to show people what you have paid into and whether or not you're on trend, exchanging social status for consumer goods or um, landfill waste, if we want to rephrase that. Something that I personally have always loved about skincare that actually kind of pulled me away from beauty was the fact that nobody knows what brand of moisturizer I'm using on my face. Nobody knows what brand of cleanser I'm using. I am using the sunscreen that serves me best, but with makeup or with a handbag or with a pair of pants, like it's all about a brand name and what people perceive of you as. That was something that I struggled with a lot. I had such severe chronic cystic acne that I felt that I wasn't good enough intrinsically. So I needed to make up for that by who I was, how funny I was, how much money I had, what I knew, etc. And obviously none of that will ever be enough if you don't find intrinsic worth in yourself. That was really hard, but for me, like a lot of makeup items were more about the brands than the actual functionality. With skincare, all of that is different for me. Skincare is hygiene. It is a basic necessity, but it also can be like a ritual, not just a routine. And that's something that I do love to indulge in. Simultaneously, even though I share some of these things online, no one is sitting here comparing their skincare products to mine you know, in a, in a line at the supermarket. No one at prom or a school dance is judging me based on what sunscreen I whip out of my bag and apply to my cheeks. It doesn't really matter like that. And I'm hoping that in a way that's how skincare is helping to break that consumer cycle, but we can't ignore the fact that many large skincare companies unfortunately do play into this. You see, when there is a need, when there is consumer demand, cosmetic companies will make them. And often cosmetic companies that are looking to create inexpensive but quality items do that by spending more money on the formula or more money on the marketing and less money on the actual component or the packaging. When you look at very popular brands that we all know and love, you know, you just walk down the aisles of a grocery store and you'll see there's a lot of plastic waste. And when you actually turn those over to read them, you realize that not all of them are recyclable or some of them are a number seven. And then if you do have labels on those, how do you separate those out? Specifically when it comes to those plastic tubes, the squeeze ones that we all know and love, um, they arguably hold cosmetics very well. But again, I now have a pair of shower scissors in which I use to cut open my old cosmetic bottle so I can actually scrape out the inside so that number one, I can wash them and recycle them properly. And number two, I can actually use all of the products that I'm buying. I mean, I'm, I'm literally shocked at how much is left over at the end of every single bottle. Now, when we throw these things away, they have two choices. Again, if we sort and recycle them properly, they can go to have new life or they can go to the dump. 
If they go to the dump, they can be shipped off to landfills, they can often be shipped off to other countries, they can be burned, um, and they can actually cause more toxic fumes, or as we spoke about earlier, they could end up in this swirling pile of garbage in our oceans. Unfortunately, fish and marine life eat these. It not only harms and kills them, but it actually makes their way up the food chain. Did you know that we as humans have microplastics in us? If you eat sushi, if you eat fish, even if you eat certain medications and water, there are microplastics in these because it has literally become such an issue in our environmental chain. Now, what about if things are recycled? Recycling is not perfect, and unfortunately, there is an issue with some recycled waste being shipped to other countries where they say that they recycle it, but often it is burned or just put in landfills like we've seen in Indonesia. But if we are able to actually sort things and remove labels and recycle them properly, they can be given new life. That could be once or twice, or it could be a couple of times. And again, that's why that number at the bottom matters. That number also dictates where and how that recycled product can be used. There are post-consumer recycled goods as well, and when we as consumers are buying new products, we do want to try our best to kind of search those out. And if we have the means and the ability to purchase those things that maybe are made from something that is post-consumer recycled. Simultaneously, again, stopping that cycle is important. So if you can reduce, if you can scale down, if you can use things that actually work for your routine and for your skin specifically, you won't be trying 50 different moisturizers trying to find one that actually works for you, and therefore saving money and cutting down on a lot of that environmental waste. And that's when Navneet explained to me why she started yours. She was struggling with her own skincare. She had experience in data science and in understanding complex algorithms. And she thought, how can I bring my love for beauty, science, and skincare together with my analytical and scientific mind? And that's how they created these complex data sets that analyze skin, but also protect the environment. She was sad about what she was seeing when it comes to pollution. She believes in a better future for ourselves, for the animals that we share the planet with, and for future generations. And and she realized that her routine wasn't indicative of that in her own life, so she decided to create something better. And she specifically took me through how to recycle these products the right way. The first thing you do is separate these by material. Yours makes it really easy to do so because these just pop off. And again, they tell you exactly what's in each component. The serum, the cream bottles, and the exfoliant are fully recyclable plastic. And the eye serum is a little glass body with a tiny plastic cap, again, both fully recyclable. The shipping and the outer boxes are cardboard, which you can either fully recycle or you could just gift to your cat. They will be very grateful and trust me, they don't care about that cat bed that you bought them from Petco. Give them the box. They do also state to double check for residue. As you use the product, the airless pump inside raises to the top, which does prevent anything from sticking to the walls and actually helps preserve the product better and get me, the user, every last drop. But once you finish the products, it is best to open the bottles and just ensure that they are completely free of any residue left over. That's why you do want to rinse them. Before recycling, give the bottle a quick rinse underwater just to make sure that they're clean and that there's no trace of product residue left. The outer packaging is completely recyclable as well, and their website states that by 2021, they pledged to bring their carbon footprint as close to net zero as possible. I didn't realize it until she took me through the line, but even the cardboard on the boxes are created to support small artists. These are small or local artists that created these designs, and each one of the products has a different one. You can tear right down the middle to reveal the full illustration. Part of what the brand stands behind is authentic people, but also this clean marketing, which you know I have a major issue with. The idea that something is clean insinuates that other things are dirty, and unfortunately, large retailers like Sephora don't really use this properly. They say chemical-free, but water is technically a chemical, right? So on my call, I specifically asked the founder about this. I was like, why are you saying clean and what does that actually mean? And that's when she told me something very interesting. Clean in the beauty industry has no standard definition. We know that. Brands can pretty much say anything they want. So for Navneet, that was an issue. And she decided to create her own distinction of what clean means. For her, it's not just about ingredients, but it's about the sourcing of them. It's about making sure that they don't support child labor. It's about making sure that they are cruelty-free and that they have vegan options. And it's about making sure that that things are sourced ethically and they are preserved in their products so that they actually work when they reach your skin. And when I found out that clean it didn't just mean, oh, Sephora told me to say this, but it was actually something that she defined to help not just us humans, but the animals and the planet, that was something that from a sustainability point really blew me away. So what does all of this mean for you? It means please start to think differently. You know that I love skincare, and again, when it comes to beauty products, this is the area that I struggle in most. This is definitely the area in my life that I spend the most on. And 
Although I am not perfect, I do try. This means try to reduce, reuse, and recycle. If you'd like to get yourself some custom skincare, this is one that I would highly recommend. I am still toying around with it, but it's at the right price. They build sustainability into the line, it matches my morals and values, and the formulations are excellent and all made in Switzerland. There is a discount code if you want to use it. But remember that the goal isn't just to consume products, it's to get products that are actually tailored to you so that you can cut down on less. You can be happy with and rejoice in the products that are made for you that you can enjoy. It also means reuse. With all of your skincare products, can you reuse those glass jars? Can you give them a second life? Can you store other things in them? And even those spaghetti jars, can you turn them into flower vases? And last but not least, of course, recycle. It really starts with knowing how, removing those stickers, removing product residue. And then it comes down to trying to shop more sustainably in the future and trying to actively purchase products that do come in these containers. I understand that that is a luxury and that is not available for everyone, Using cheap, disposable materials are actually less expensive than using post-consumer recycled materials, which is so backwards. But the fact that yours commits to doing that and they actually do it at a reasonable price is something that my face is happy with. I would love to know, what are your stances on sustainability? Where do you feel like you're really winning and where do you feel like you could still use some help? And also, I do encourage you to take the skincare quiz. Tell me kind of what you get, what some of the active ingredients are in your products. And if you do end up taking some home, why don't you tag me on Instagram with what you got in yours? A huge thanks to Navneet and her team for working with us on this video to provide both information and a sponsorship, as well as allowing us to make a donation to charity. As you can see, this video is a fundraiser and I'm personally making donations on my own behalf as well. It's not about being perfect, it's about doing a little bit more each day. And for me, that's what being beautiful, both inside and out, is really all about. So with that, be sure to recycle the like button. Always remember to be beautiful, both inside and out. And I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.